Cambridge Aerospace has rapidly emerged as one of the most intriguing new players in the defense sector, promising to deliver what many in Britain and across Europe have been calling for, affordable, scalable air and missile defense. Founded in 2024 and operating in stealth until its recent debut at London's DSEI 2025 Defense Exhibition, the company has positioned itself as a potential game-changer in countering threats from drones, cruise missiles, and other aerial weapons. Its unveiling of the Skyhammer and Starhammer interceptor systems has already attracted significant attention, drawing comparisons to Israel's Iron Dome and sparking debates about the future of British air defense. The company's rise has been fueled by significant financial backing, which is unusual for such a young defense startup. Cambridge Aerospace has raised more than $130 million, including a $100 million series around led by high-profile investors such as Spark Capital, Lakestar, Lux, Excel, and Ukraine's D3 Fund. Among the prominent figures supporting the venture is Eric Schmidt, the former Google chief executive, who has spoken openly about the changing nature of modern warfare and the defining role drones are likely to play in the future. Former UK Defence Secretary Grant Shapps has been appointed chairman, reinforcing the seriousness of the firm's ambitions and providing a direct connection to Britain's defence establishment. At DSEI 2025, Cambridge Aerospace lifted the curtain on two interceptor systems that it believes can answer the UK's urgent defence needs. Skyhammer, a missile with a range of up to 30 km and a top speed of about 700 km per hour, has been in testing since early 2025. Starhammer, in contrast, is designed as a shorter-range subsonic interceptor with a reach of about 10 km, optimized for engaging faster and more agile aerial targets. Both systems rely on radar seekers, allowing them to function in all-weather conditions, a clear improvement over low-cost alternatives that depend on visual targeting. Each interceptor carries a blast fragmentation warhead and is launched from surface-based tubes, simplifying deployment and enabling mass production. One of the most striking aspects of Cambridge Aerospace's development program is its speed. The company claims to have moved from conceptual design to flight testing in as little as six weeks, a pace that is nearly unheard of in the traditionally slow-moving defense industry. Weekly feature testing continues as part of an iterative design cycle, demonstrating a Silicon Valley, style engineering mindset applied to missile development. Alongside the Interceptor program, Cambridge Aerospace has also announced the Nightstar Solid Rocket Motor Initiative, which is intended to establish a sovereign British supply chain for propulsion systems. A facility is already under development in Norfolk to support this effort, signaling the company's long-term commitment to domestic production. Production scale and affordability are at the heart of Cambridge Aerospace's strategy. The company's goal is to manufacture interceptors in the hundreds per month initially, with plans to expand to thousands per month as demand and infrastructure grow. To achieve this, it is embracing automation and autonomous systems throughout the design and manufacturing process. These measures are intended to keep costs dramatically lower than traditional systems, with projected unit prices around 1-2% to of existing interceptors on the market. In practice, this would mean Britain and its allies could purchase large volumes of interceptors for the price of only a handful of conventional missiles, a critical factor in facing the saturation drone and missile attacks increasingly seen in modern conflicts. Stephen Barrett, the founder and chief executive of Cambridge Aerospace, has become a strong advocate for this model of scalable and affordable defense. Formerly the head of aerospace research at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Barrett has argued that the war in Ukraine has demonstrated the inadequacy of traditional high-cost systems when confronting large-scale drone and cruise missile barges. According to him, the West must adapt by creating defense solutions that are not only effective but also financially sustainable in the face of massed aerial attacks. His vision is for Cambridge Aerospace to provide the UK and Europe with precisely that an industrial base capable of producing interceptors in quantities sufficient to meet the demands of modern warfare. This ambition is also closely tied to broader changes in the investment landscape. 
For many years, venture capital firms and institutional investors were reluctant to fund defense projects, often citing ethical concerns and a reluctance to be associated with the arms industry. However, the ongoing war in Ukraine, coupled with the growing threat of drone proliferation and missile strikes, has shifted these attitudes dramatically. Defense is increasingly being reframed as a matter of resilience and even as part of broader ESG, environmental, social, and governance, principles under the category of defending democracy. Eric Schmidt, whose involvement has drawn attention to Cambridge Aerospace, has predicted that drone warfare may diminish the relevance of tanks and artillery, further underlining the need for investment in new forms of defense. For the United Kingdom, the emergence of a company like Cambridge Aerospace comes at a crucial moment. Parliamentary reports and defense committee statements have repeatedly warned that Britain's current air defenses are inadequate to counter massed missile or drone attacks. While the Royal Navy operates Type 45 destroyers with Sea Viper missile systems, their utility for homeland defense is limited by the small size of the fleet and the range of available radars. The British Army has deployed Sky Sabre medium range systems and Starstreak high velocity missiles while the Royal Air Force relies on Typhoon fighters under quick reaction alert duties, supported by radar networks and the RAF Filingdale's early warning station. Yet, gaps remain, particularly in ground-based defense against saturation strikes. The Strategic Defense Review of 2025 has recognized these shortcomings, allocating £1 billion to integrated air and missile defense and calling for a more digitally enabled, AI-supported defense posture. This vision includes not only procurement of additional systems such as the E-7 Wedgetail Early Warning Aircraft and Next Generation Destroyers, but also investments in directed energy weapons, including the Dragonfire Laser, which is expected to be deployed aboard Type 45 destroyers starting in 2027. Britain has also signaled its commitment to multinational projects such as NATO's Integrated Air and Missile Defense Initiative and the German-led European Sky Shield Initiative, though it has yet to commit to purchasing systems under the latter. Against this backdrop, the credibility of Cambridge Aerospace's interceptor systems will rest not on prototypes or exhibitions, but on their ability to enter mass production and integrate seamlessly into Britain's layered defense framework. Analysts note that without a system comparable to Iron Dome, the UK remains exposed to the type of saturation attacks that have proven devastating in Ukraine and Israel. If Skyhammer and Starhammer can be fielded in the promised numbers at the promised costs, they could fill a critical gap in the nation's defenses and provide NATO with an affordable solution adaptable to multiple theaters. The company's rapid rise also reflects a broader trend in which European nations are reassessing their industrial base and the degree to which they can rely on foreign suppliers for critical defense technologies. By establishing domestic rocket motor production through the Nightstar program and aiming for mass production within the UK, Cambridge Aerospace aligns with government priorities for sovereign capability and resilience. Such developments may also position Britain as a key contributor to European defence initiatives, complementing German and French programmes and strengthening NATO's overall deterrence posture. Ultimately, the story of Cambridge Aerospace is not just about a new defence company or a pair of promising interceptor systems. It is about a shift in mindset, both in the defence industry and among investors, towards scalable, affordable, and rapidly deployable technologies that can address the realities of modern conflict. As drones, cruise missiles, and potentially hypersonic weapons become more common on battlefields, the need for vast numbers of interceptors will only grow. Cambridge Aerospace is betting that it can meet this demand, and in doing so, help close critical gaps in Britain's defences while setting a precedent for how Europe can adapt to the challenges of 21st-century warfare.